I think the gap is 100% still. Right now, we have to create a work space for mm -hmm. Loop, and we need to create a team for a project. And those two things still feel a little bit disparate. Yeah. We have been, we have been right. communicating that to everyone yeah. we can right. yeah. for a while now. Uh, yeah. Because it's definitely a challenge. It's a, definitely a problem. Like, Microsoft is creating a bigger problem with this particular uh, scenario. Um, and the thing that I would tell any of our customers is, you're going to need both. Like, right. if you want to start using Loop, you're going to need both. And you're going to need to figure out your own way to make them work together and link together, whether or not you want it to be Loop links to Teams or Teams linked to Loop. I would never recommend someone uh, not have one without the other yeah. Um, yeah. because it just doesn't make any sense. Otherwise, you're breaking one of our core tenants, which is topic based communication, and you're going to have your communication in email or in chat messages, which breaks the whole point. Let, yeah. Let's maybe draw lines around that. So, Loop would serve as like the knowledge base or the the scratch pad for stuff, the, the place where you can build something together and teams would be the place where you talk about those things. Uh, is that close? Yeah, so if Microsoft's listening, this is what I've been trying, been thinking about trying to tell, explain to them. Uh, they should have, cho when they came out with a loop, they should have chosen to create uh, teams and loop in an integrated way. And you could either choose to back teams team shared workspaces with Loop, or you could choose to back it with SharePoint. Mm -hmm. And the experience with Loop, files, all of those th conversations, everything would be tightly integrated with Loop, and that would be your back end, and you wouldn't have access to lists, and you wouldn't have access to the other features that are in SharePoint. If you don't choose that, then you would still have SharePoint as your back end. It's your standard basic experience. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that that more, rel more accurately reflects how you really how that, how the end user would want to have those two things to work together. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No, I, I think it's the I, first time you've heard it. You yeah. Say it, but. Well, I um, like I said, I've been having conversations with the team about this. I said something similar uh, to them when you create a team today. So much like infrastructure gets built yeah. underneath that. Why can't it just create a loop workspace too? That like, mm -hmm. well, I know, I know or, why. Yeah, like there's maybe technical, but like from a user perspective, that I'm would be ask the most that. intuitive. Absolutely, right, right. But I think it, uh, yeah, it leaves a little bit to be desired. I think your concept of pick a SharePoint site versus a loop. Um, I would, I would hope that they would be able to articulate that in a more user friendly way, and where they yeah, don't have to understand ask, the correct. tech. Right. Like I, th well, I think, I think. Most people who've never used Teams before, if I'm a person just out of school that's just starting in the workforce, if it just made it in loop, I wouldn't care. Right. right? You wouldn't know any different. For people who are have business processes that are built around, oh, I need a list and I need these other Heavy things. Heavy document, mm -hmm. like, version yeah. management, yep, yep, controls. Yep. I need PDFs. I need, I need Word documents. I need whatever. Like, I think there are cases for both. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, I struggle, just like what you were saying, I struggle to to see a world where I can make them work well at the same time together mm -hmm. um, because you so often want to be referenced. Like, they're just so, like, I want them to be so tightly integrated. Yeah. And, and if they're <laughs> tightly integrated, what's the point of having the other one? Yeah. This this makes me think of the whole, like, toolbox analogy where it's like you want – I want to be able to look at each tool as its own uh, unique tool that serves a particular purpose – but it serves like secondary purposes too, right? Like a hammer is to nail something down, but you can also pry something up. You can also demolish something with it. There's other tools that can do all of those same things, but they might be better or worse at it. At, at it. Mm -hmm. Microsoft, uh, their approach is very much like that, where it's like, here's your toolbox of stuff. In this case, in particular, there is such a specific workflow or a specific standard that they're trying to set with you create a team for these purposes that it feels like loop is just a small add-on to that that like yeah. it would integrate so well it doesn't it shouldn't feel like a separate tool in the toolbox it feels like it should be one right of those swiss army knives right now it feels like it's a tool in a different toolbox yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. like it doesn't even feel like there's a spot for it yeah but it's but i like it's very interesting back on the project management piece of it and planner in particular that's one of the things people don't like about Planner is that they didn't make it as its own thing. 
it could only mm. get created as part of a group and a team. Like, yeah, so Microsoft yeah, yeah. can't, can't win. win. <laughs> they can't win. Uh, yeah. uh, and I say this flippantly a little bit is like they can't win for either way they choose. Mm -hmm. But the reason they can't win is because they didn't go all the way, right? Yeah. If they had gone all the way in either way, it would have probably worked out. But they also struggle doing that because they have they're getting one price for all of these tools. And when you think about everything between bookings and streaming and money. like blah, 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 blah. You go, well, how me, can they afford to make all of those things? Let me pull up their sweet financial right? report. Really oh, yeah. yeah, right. All right, so I want I'm not us saying to, they can't do it. I want us to leave uh, our listeners with just each of our kind of hot takes on what we think Microsoft 365 tools can do for people with project management or task management. Take it whichever way you want. But I, I think I do want to leave this on an optimistic note because I know we all use these tools and mm -hmm. whether or not we talk for hours about their <laughs> shortcomings. But um, yeah, what's each of our hot take on where you would tell someone to start uh, using these? When you can understand maybe some of the, the enterprise level desire that you have is not going to be met and you can work within... with. You can work with the um, ability to accept some gotchas and very much have that, like, this is good enough. We can still accomplish things within these walls. If you come to the table with that perspective, you'll be totally fine. Run with planner, run with to-do, try it out. It's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and so don't feel like everything needs to be perfect and particularly in the project management world you compliance people love to have everything <laughs> just so um he's looking at matt and i <laughs> yeah yeah they're which is a it's a good it's a good um influence to have on the team um but a lot can get done with a little yeah yeah what about you matt so i would just uh add a piece that we haven't really talked about but i think is a critical piece of this which is to say if you are trying to manage tasks for 100 people in a way that's in a, in a process that's core to your business and that has to happen the same way every single time, you don't need a project management tool at mm -hmm. all. You need a process, you know, a business process tool, business mm -hmm. process automation tool, right? Uh, I think a lot of times people take something that they think, well, I just need something to manage my tasks. But what they really need is we do this 100 times a, a, a year or a day or a whatever, mm -hmm. and it, we just need it to happen all the time. And when somebody leaves and we hire somebody else, they need to be, come in day one and be able to, like, start doing this thing and just execute the thing. And they think somehow that project management tools are going to solve that problem. You Project management tools can help solve that problem, but your bigger problem is a process problem, an automation problem, a, a strategic organizational problem. Um, right. These tools are meant for ad hoc projects. They're meant for, I get up in the morning, I go to work, we have a new thing that we're trying to do. I need to organize my tasks on those things. I need to plan out what we're going to do over the next month. We're going to go execute these things. I'm going to fit those in with my other tasks. It's going to get complete and it's going to get closed down and it's going to go away. It's not meant for enterprise solutions, which is primarily what you were talking about. And when you say enterprise, they leave. A lot of people leave what I'm talking about about out. They sure. go, well, the, I don't. I don't need all of this I'm not other stuff. I'm not a huge I'm, company. Yeah. I don't, but like, if if you're trying to make the core of your business better, like, uh, and that core is something that's repeated over and over and over again, and like I said, you want to be able to just drop somebody in and make it happen. You know, that's not the. Uh, mm -hmm. That's this isn't going to solve your problem. It's a process problem, not a mm -hmm. tool problem, right? I think that's really insightful. Mm -hmm. Like that, that goes to a lot of people I talk to. They're like, yeah, we have this thing that we do. I just need it recurring. I need to be able to put people in that process. And then I want to see where everything is at in the process mm -hmm. and be able to, like, that's not. And that's, that's, that's Monday.com is like focused on that. Sure. Uh, other tools out there are focused on that. Mm -hmm. This is not that. And when I talk about that, I don't think. Monday.com is a project management tool, right? Like 
that's not it real, helps you build a process is build that a kind pro of what yeah. you're yeah, and definitely something that I've noticed um, that's kind of actually at the intersection of what you're both saying is if you're trying to build the process while learning or using a new tool where you don't understand the limitations, you're that's it's a hard thing to do because A, all the limitations are going to come up and you're going to be like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Yeah. That gets frustrating. But then it limits the way you actually can think through the process. So yeah. You can't be creative with the process. Yeah, so you, you almost kind of have to do those things a bit separately um, and then bring your process into the tool, understand the limitations, be flexible about it. You said, you know, don't let good be the enemy of, yeah, don't yeah. let perfect be the enemy of good yeah. enough. Yeah, I, <laughs> that remind, like that's literally one of the projects we had recently. Someone came to us and said, hey, I think I can use all these tools this way. Can you double check me? And so we did like a mini discovery type project where we got to double check all those things and mm -hmm. say, uh, you're going to hit a wall there. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. Where Yeah, so we can sort of from a bird's eye look and see how all the pieces fit together because we mm -hmm. understand the, the gotchas. But, but they weren't necessarily building their process while applying the tools. They knew their process yeah, already. Yeah, right. They yeah, had something. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That they were that was on repeat. Yep. yep. Okay. So to recap, us um, this was a big topic. Obviously, we talked about this for a long time. But project management, task management. Why is it so difficult in the Microsoft 365 space? Um, and then what hacks do we use in our business uh, to actually make these tools work for us? I think we've shared a lot about really making sure that you're clear with the outcome that you're trying to have with both project management and task management, um, and and how you can then meet the tool where it's at or have the tool meet you where you're at. Um, mm -hmm. So just understanding the limitations are there. And a few of the tools that we talked about, just to recap, Planner, Teams, To Do, Loop, Project for the Web, which is an add-on, and Copilot, which is an add-on. Um, and I just want to highlight, like you mentioned, Matt, all of these tools that we've been talking about in theory help your effectiveness, which helps manage projects and helps task management, but doesn't necessarily do the tasks for you or manage the project for you. Yeah. Um, so you just got to figure out what's going to work for your business and what gaps these things can, can help come in and fill. So thanks for listening today. Uh, if you have any comments or opinions on anything we talked about, definitely comment below the video and or, or on Spotify. We'd love to hear from you and let us know if we should revisit this topic in a future podcast. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, everybody.